Okay, so I've got a lot to work on um, with this video. It's going to be all over the show just because of the amount of time um, difference between the previous one and this one. So I've been away. Obviously, I've mentioned in the last episode that I'll be away for work. I'm back from work now. That time uh, has allowed me to obviously put some good cash into my live account and we'll come to the live account trading uh, a little bit later and it allowed me to do some thinking about my current strategy for Dow Jones and if I mentioned in the last episode I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue uh, trading it or not I now have my answer and uh, I also I just um, rethought a couple of strategies so the one strategy I was using was on the, I think one minute time frame. I was doing a, if the market is going sideways strategy, a quick little scalping uh, strategy. I decided during that, during this window of time that I just didn't like it. I couldn't f accurately figure out where to put up, uh, put my stop loss. It just didn't make sense. The other thing that I wanted to refine was on the three minute time frame uh, that I was using, trying to follow the market trend, I kept getting spikes that stopped me out. And when I did the, when I crunched the numbers, I noticed that those spikes were equivalent to the um, amount of points that were busy moving on the five minute time frame. So then I had a look at that. I did a couple of practice trades on the five minute and still get stopped out. And that's what made me realize, okay, cool. What if I try it on the 10 minute chart? Because if I'm with trend and there's a five minute spike with like a couple of maybe extra points that would then knock me out if I was on the five. But if I'm on the 10, then it's no problem as long as I'm with the trend. So I like that idea and I decided to use that idea. Let's go back to the live account. So I managed to fund it um, to $750, a, not like from zero to 750, but with all the extra work that I did, I funded it to 750. Then I had a client who has taken an interest in uh, this career and he said that he was willing to back me as well and put a deal together and um, fund as well, which fund into that account as well, which means effectively not only am I a market trader as a career, but now I've become a money manager because as part of the deal and entails that I grow his money too. And it wasn't the first time we'd had that conversation. We'd had that conversation quite a few times, but now I just, uh, again, it just came up in conversation. And I just felt a lot more comf uh, comfortable with, um, with his suggestion and with my ability to manage um, that money. Um, initially, I felt a uh, concern. Um, and the concern was just like, no, I want to prove myself first. I didn't really want to manage other people's money. And then when I agreed to it, I also, there was that niggling feeling of concern. And I'm so glad that I did actually push through that fear because it was probably the best decision that I could have made as a trader or for this career or for myself. Being accountable to somebody else in this profession allowed me to now take on a sense of responsibility that I could have just thrown away or neglected if it was just me and my own efforts and my own money. Now that I am managing somebody else's and there's agreements, there's communication agreements, it just makes me feel so much more responsible in my profession. It makes me feel so much more responsible in what needs to be communicated um, and also much more responsible in my trading, even more so than that. So those small little things happened, that extra um, funding that came from that client that I'm very grateful for, um, then equated my account to a thousand dollars, which is a very interesting number because that is the number that I started, that I started with. Um, almost five years ago now, when I first started trading financial markets, uh, I had to liquidate that account to like pay for car um, repairs and a new laptop, unfortunately. But back then, 
that a thousand dollars I saved a very very long time for, and it just feels like this whole journey, this whole like apprenticeship journey of becoming a trader has now really just come full circle. The final thing that I realized was I needed to. The only thing really left was to for me to see what is the percentage hit rate of each of my strategies. So out of 100 trades with that strategy, what's the percentage that they actually work? And what can I do to tweak them? And the only way to really do that is just to keep trying. Mm, sorry, my nose is so blocked today. I hope I'm not getting sick. So, um, and the only way to do that is to try. And because I made that realization, it just made me realize, okay, cool. I can now trade m with my live account. I'm ready for it. So that's what I did. And that takes us to the next part of this little video. I've traded my live account. I've used live money in the financial markets for the first time in almost five years. And I did that yesterday. On Dow Jones, I did six trades and I went from $1,000 in the account to $923 in the account. It wasn't a good trading day. I picked a good day to start, <laughs> evidently. Ah, Mark Dow Jones was just sideways the whole session. I missed the open, but from um, about six o'clock our time till Mark closed, which was almost 10 o'clock our time, the market just went sideways, it did nothing. And there were a couple of fake outs. So let's go through these trades. My first trade was good. Um, it was in profit. I got all of $2 profit. Um, I did manage to catch the trend. The trend uh, went all the way to a support line. I was seeing about $40 but I was also making the assumption that it would continue in that direction and it didn't. As soon as it hit the line, it just sucked it back up and at least I managed to get to my break even level. So that was my only good, I suppose you can say trade. To be honest, I'm quite happy with all the trades that I did because they were within my rules, but you just get those days that suck. And fortunately I've experienced them now with many, 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 iterations on demo um and also you have to ask yourself when you're doing demo trades are you are you treating those accounts like real money because i took that approach and by taking that approach it, it allowed me to really feel the pain of losing money and really feel the awesome feeling emotion of when you win and when you get more or less enough of those experiences, you begin to understand how you emotionally react to things and you begin to detach. But there's a big difference between being detached and being in denial. So just be careful. Um, so even though, yes, today was like a losing day um, or that, yeah, yesterday was a losing day. Um, the feeling of detachment was there. And that's and that felt healthy. That felt great. Because I know that I can come back strong. And I'll come to that conclusion a little bit um, of what's happening next uh, very soon. I just want to go over all these other trades. The others were, I don't have the numbers here, just the notes. But the others, the, they were um, out, yeah, like losing 25, 25, and then a 10 and a 10. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it was $25 loss, $25 loss, and like a $10, $10 loss. So one trade, I moved the, st I felt like I moved the stop too early. That's what I thought, saw in my notes. However, that was actually the right thing to do because the market actually moved uh, in the wrong direction. And if I hadn't moved my stop, I would have made a much bigger loss. So I'm happy with that. Um, the next note I've got here is that um, because it was the first time for me trading in the 10 minutes, I misinterpreted 
the way that the candle was busy forming. I was looking, I, it was simply just, you could call it rookie error. Even professionals do the wrong thing sometimes. So I just simply misinterpreted a certain candle formation and the other one I just put a stop way too close. The final two trades, seeing as I was literally at my desk the entire day, watching this thing do nothing, I could clearly see it was finally going sideways. And I said, okay, cool. Why don't I try that sideways strategy that I said I don't want to use anymore on the one minute? Because I could see clearly a very good place to put the stop loss if I applied that sideways strategy. So I, I said, cool, let me give it a shot. However, those two trades that uh, were like 10-ish dollars, those two were mistakes because a one minute moves at one minute, a 10 minute moves at 10 and anything can happen in those 10 minutes. So again, um, I'm glad that I learned those lessons and that's truth be told, that's why I like this industry because literally money teaches you not to mess up again and it will keep teaching you that mistake until you learn the lesson and it teaches you very, very hard lessons. All in all though, if I were to compare this trading session to my very first couple of trading sessions almost five years ago, chalk and cheese different. Chalk and cheese. The emotional awareness that I had towards losing and towards gaining, I'm very proud of myself for. The ability to not do gamble trades, I'm very impressed for as well because Back then, it was just like, ooh, I have a feeling. <laughs> Press the button. Ooh, the market's moving. Wow, let me get in. Fear of missing out. Press the button. Um, you know, having the feeling of trying to, like revenge trading, like, ooh, I made a loss. Let me try and get it back. That wasn't there. I feel like I've, I could definitely see my progress. Now, let's talk about what happens next. Let's answer the question. Do I want to continue with Dow Jones? And the answer is absolutely not. Dow has been my very first teacher. It has been a phenomenal teacher, but historically it also hasn't made me a lot of money. I've noticed that in my practice trades, sorry, give me a second. Ooh, you can't cu cut this out. <laughs> I've got like a, Something stuck in my chest. Um, yeah, DAX, well, historically, what I've noticed is that I trade the DAX, make some great profits, and then Dow Jones would absolutely eat them up straight away. At the end of the session yesterday, um, after logging off, I looked at DAX. I just decided, let me go check it out. And I noticed the smoothest moves ever. And I've never traded DAX during the Dow Jones sessions. And that's what I'm going to do. I just don't want to trade Dow Jones anymore. Um, it's just not a partner that I want to dance with. It's been a great teacher and I'm really, really uh, grateful for its teaching. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't make sense for me. DAX just makes me money all the time. And so why am I not just sticking with the thing that wants to stick with me? <laughs> you know what? these weird little subtle lessons that you learn along the way. So that is the story moving forward. Um, I'm not going to go into the live account again. I want to stick with my demo and I want to stay with DAX, explore um, Japanese um, index a little bit more and then get that sense of winning. You need that confidence, that winning feeling get that back. And then once that is back, then I'm back on the live account and feeling good. Cool friends. Sorry that one was rambly, but um, I don't know. Like I feel so stuffy today. My nose is just stuffy. So I still committed again. Sorry that that was rambly, but I've committed to uploading a video at the end of every single session. And so that's what I've done. If Anything here has helped you, great. My job has been accomplished. 
if you've listened so far, man, I'm sorry that you had to listen to 15 minutes of my ramble, but I appreciate it all the same. And until I see you again, go well, trade safe. Adios.